Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about the six seals as we're trying to get an understanding of what events that we can be expecting to happen in the year 2021. As you know, we've been doing a lot of classes looking at the prophecies, and the more we look, the more it seems like they all are pointing to the year 2021. Well, in this class, we're going to be looking particularly at the seven seals. And if you know anything about our channel, you know we will have scripture in order to back up when those seven seals started and what seal we're actually in now and what will be taking place during this seal. But we'll also be talking about that great and dreadful day of the Lord, which includes that huge earthquake that we hear about all over scripture with the sun being darkened and the moon being turned to blood. We'll be touching on the new covenant and its relationship to the great and dreadful day of the Lord and the hour of the conscience. And toward the end of the video, we'll even be going into the prophecies and when we can expect these events to take place. So if you would go ahead and hit that like button, make sure you are subscribed to our channel already and be prepared to leave a comment as we go. Now, the first thing we want to do is to look at the six seals. Finally, we have a scriptural account of what the six seals are and when they took place. Pretty much anything you've heard about the six seals thus far has been speculation and imagination as people tried to fill in the blanks left by the book of Revelation and the other 66 books of the Bible. In other words, those books didn't tell us when the six seals took place. But now we have the third testament of the Bible that gives us detail on the six seals and when they took place. So now we can actually stop guessing about the six seals. What you're looking at is a PDF version of the third testament that you can download from a website called jesus-comes.com and we see in the table of contents that chapter 8 actually talks about these seven seals along with the three divine revelations those three divine revelations that is talking about is the old testament of the bible the new testament of the bible and the third testament of the bible that chapter goes into detail on why we have three separate testaments and even touches on why that old problem has arrived with the rejection of the testaments just like the jewish community rejects the new testament of the bible there are a lot of professing christians who are rejecting the third testament of the bible today and it is for that reason that many people are confused on biblical truths only explained in the third testament of the bible like the seven seals of revelation this is what the messiah was talking about when he was saying that you can't put new wine in old bottles lest they break and spill the wine so we won't worry about those guys we will continue to praise the Father for his word, and we will continue to love and read it as it provides us with information that we need in order to survive this imminent tribulation. So let's jump down to chapter 38, and let's briefly go through the section on the seven seals of sacred history so that we can understand which seal we're in and how it relates to the vials and the trumpets. Now, before I talk on these, I want to say again that this is going to be different from what you've heard about the seven seals over history. But just understand, without a scriptural account of what the seven seals are, the interpretations of the seals has been as inaccurate as they have been inconsistent. Again, praise the Father for his word. So we're looking here at verse 45. It says, the first of these phases of spiritual evolution in the world is represented by Abel, 
the first minister of the father who offered his sacrifice to God. He is the symbol of sacrifice. Emery rose up against him. So what this is saying is that the first seal was actually opened with the birth of Abel. So when we are looking in the book of Revelation and chapter six, and it is talking about the opening of the first seal and the coming of he who rode the white horse, this is talking about the beginning of man's conquering spirit. Just like Cain killed Abel because he was envious of him and he wanted him out of the way. Well, that spirit still exists today. And that period would have lasted until the second seal was opened, which we read about in verse 46, part one. It says the second stage was represented by Noah. He is the symbol of faith. He constructed the ark from divine inspiration and led men into it to reach salvation. Against him, the multitudes railed with doubt, mockery, and paganism of their spirits. Yet Noah left his seed of faith. So when you think about all that transpired between the time of Abel and Noah, you're actually thinking about the events that started the first seal. And I have to make a note here that none of these seals have actually closed. Once the seals were broken, they never were sealed again. So we have seen that peace is still not a part of the world that we live in. And people still kill one another even till this day. Before Noah's time, the only real violence that you saw was the slaying of Abel by his brother Cain. But after Noah, there were many wars taking place throughout the world as different nations continue to want to conquer one another. It goes on to say that the third stage is represented by Jacob. He symbolizes strength. He is Israel, the strong. Spiritually, he saw the ladder by which all of you will ascend to sit on the right hand of the creator. The angel of the Lord rose up to test his strength and perseverance. But now when you read in the book of Revelation, it talks about he who rode on the black horse and how he bought famine and caused the bread to be sold. Well, if you remember the story, it was the times after Jacob that man had to go into Egypt for the survival of the seven years of famine. And it was during that time that mankind had to purchase food for the first time. Before then, buying food was unheard of. But when Joseph stored up that corn during the seven years of plenty, he actually sold it to the people during the seven years of famine. And like we said before, those seals never closes. So we have been buying food ever since. And even to this day, the human race is the only species on the earth that has to pay to eat. Verse 47 talks about the fourth seal. He says the fourth is symbolized by Moses. He represents the law. He represents the tablets wherein it was written for the humanity of all times. It was he who with his eminent faith rescued the people to lead them on the road of salvation to the promised land. He is the symbol of the law. In the book of Revelation, as it's talking about he who rode this pale horse, it says that death and hell followed with him. Well, it's easy to understand with this death and hell why mankind needed this law in the first place. But notice how it says, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. This would have been the time in which you had the rise of the Medo-Persians and the Greeks and the other world dominant nations who were now killing each other, not only with the sword, but they were starving people like Nebuchadnezzar did there in Jerusalem before he captured them and brought them into Babylon. 
And if you remember, while they were in Babylon, one of the things that Nebuchadnezzar did to the people who didn't obey him was to allow the beasts to eat them. Do you remember the story of Daniel and the lion's den? But anyway, verse 48 says the fifth stage is represented by Jesus, the divine word, the sacrificial lamb. He who has spoken to you in all times and who will continue to speak to you. He is love for he was made man to inhabit the dwelling places of man to suffer their pains, to show humanity the path of sacrifice, love and charity by which it must achieve redemption from all their sins. He came as master to teach, to be born as part of humanity, to live and love, to achieve the sacrifice and to die loving, forgiving and blessing. He represents the fifth stage and his symbol is love. And when you're reading over in the book of Revelation, when it talks about the fifth seal, it says, and I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Well, it was during the time of the Messiah in which people started to be slain for the word of God, like the 12 apostles were almost all slaughtered by the Romans who continued to persecute them even until the time of Constantine when the Christian religion was changed to what we know as Catholicism. Well, those who would not obey the rules of the Catholic Church have been slain for the word of God ever since. Then it goes on to talk about the sixth seal. In verse 49, it says the sixth stage is represented by Elijah. He is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. It is he who goes on his chariot of fire, bearing light to all nations and to all the worlds that are unknown to you, but known to me. For I am the father of all the worlds and all the creatures. This is the stage in which you are living. That is Elijah. It is his light that illuminates you. He represents the teachings that were hidden, but that are being revealed to mankind in this era. So this is telling us clearly that we live in the sixth seal now and are awaiting the opening of the seventh seal, which we read about in verse 50 that says the seventh stage is represented by the father himself. He is the end, the culmination of evolution. In him is the stage of grace, the seventh seal. And we see over in chapter eight of the book of Revelation that after the seventh seal is opened, there will be silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And then in verse two, you start to see about these seven angels which stood before God and to them were given the seven trumpets. So it is clear from this verse that the seven trumpets and the seven vials come after the sixth seal and the opening of the seventh seal. But since we haven't seen all of the events of the seal as described in chapter six, let's drill down on this sixth seal just a little bit. Verse 51 out of the third testament says, here I have deciphered the mystery of the seven seals. That is why I say to you that this is the sixth seal, for five of them have already passed. The sixth is unleashed, but the seventh remains sealed. The time for its contents has not yet arrived. There is time yet before that stage appears before you. When that stage arrives, there will be grace, perfection, and peace. But oh, how much man will weep to purify his spirit. Now, from the information that we're given in all three testaments of the Bible and my understanding of them, I'm not quite ready to say in this video when this seventh seal will be opened. You see how it says the time for its contents have not yet arrived. There is time yet before that stage appears before you. 
We know the Father has a way of delivering information to us in a timely manner, even though it was written hundreds of years ago. Is he talking about the time from when this book was written till the time of the seventh seal? Or is he talking about the time from when we're doing this class until the seventh seal will be opened? But since we haven't seen all of the events in the sixth seal, let's go on to look at them. So before we go back over to the book of Revelation and look what it has to say about the sixth seal, let's continue in the third testament looking at the other verses in it that talks about the sixth seal. Now I remind you that you can find a link to this book in the description of this video, both an audio book and a PDF that you could download to your computer. And while you're looking for those in the description, make sure you push that subscription button and that you have that bell notification button pushed. Just like when you push the like button, those actions send a message to the YouTube algorithm that you prefer this type of information. All right, looking at verse 52 in this same chapter 38. It says, the book of the seven seals is the history of your life, of your evolution on earth, with all its struggles, passions, conflicts, and finally with the triumph of the good and justice of love and spirituality over the passions of materialism. Now, this is important to understand how it's saying that we have evolved over these seven seals. You hear scientists often refer to evolution as if it somehow refers to our material bodies. But we understand from the third testament of the Bible that the only evolution for the human race is spiritual evolution. Verse 53 says, believe truly that everything leads to a spiritual and eternal goal so that you may give each lesson its rightful place that corresponds to it talking about the different things that we had to learn over our past lifetimes in these different stages in which we lived in. That's what the scripture was referring to when it was talking about Jacob's ladder. Jacob was seeing a ladder of our spiritual evolution that we must all ascend in order to reach the father one day. Verse 54 says, while the light of the sixth seal illuminates you, it shall be a time of conflict, vigilance, and purification. And we can see that all around us, conflict, vigilance, and purification. But when that time has passed, you will have reached a new stage in which the seventh seal will open new revelations to you. With what satisfaction and joy will the new time be received by the spirit when it is surprised in a cleansed and prepared state? While the sixth seal illuminates you, flesh and spirit will be purified. This is what the Bible refers to as judgment day. That judgment is part of our purification process. And that seventh seal that is talking about of joy and satisfaction, that's talking about the kingdom of heaven or the millennial age. It should be easy to understand that only purified spirits will be allowed in the kingdom of heaven. So we can praise the Father for this tribulation that will surely purify all of us and get us ready for that new time period. Now, let's jump down to verse 64. It says, this era whose dawn you admire in the infinite is the sixth stage initiated in the spiritual life of humanity, an era of light, of revelation, of fulfillment of the ancient prophecies and forgotten promises. In the sixth seal, upon his unleashing, overflowing with his content of wisdom, your spirit in a message full of justice, clarification, and revelations. Verse 66 says, The Father knew already of the pain and trials that will bow humanity and of the degree of perversity that man would reach. The arrival of the comforter means for you the opening of the sixth seal and the beginning of a new stage in evolution for humanity. Talking about the comforting spirit that we read about over in the book of John. 
This again is why mankind is having so many intuitions and dreams these days is because of this spirit of truth that we know as the comforter dwelling upon mankind. It says, from that moment, a divine judgment was opened for all men. Each life and work, each step is strictly judged. It is the end of an era, not the end of life. Referring to judgment day and the trials that are upon humanity. Verse 67 says, it is the end of the times of sin, and it is necessary that all the contents of the sixth seal of the book of God be poured out into the spirits, wakening in them from their lethargy, so that man rises up bearing the harmony of his spirit with all creation, and that he prepare for the unleashing of the seventh seal by the Lamb, which will bring the final dregs of the cup of bitterness but also the triumphs of truth, love, and divine justice. Now, this to me creates separation between the events of the seventh seal and those of the sixth seal. But like we're learning here today that we still have yet more time to go before we arrive at the seventh seal. But when we get there, we know that there will be other events that we will have to go through namely the seven trumpets and the seven vials. Now, for the next verse that we'll look at talking about the sixth seal, we'll jump down to chapter 60 of the Third Testament of the Bible. It actually talks about the ministers of the next era, those disciples that's going to replace the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug. Well, in verse 116, it says, when the time comes, beloved people, you will arrive and share my holy word with your brothers. You will scatter throughout the world like good disciples. And this new gospel, which I have brought you, will spread. Now, this verse always reminds me of that scripture, which says that the word would have to be spread throughout all of the world. Was it necessarily talking about the Old Testament and the New Testament of the Bible? Or was it talking about the Third Testament of the Bible, which most of humanity hasn't heard of yet? It is the information from these doctrines that will be necessary for the survival of the human race. So where it could be talking about the information from all three testaments, it could be very well talking about the Third Testament of the Bible. But anyway, it says the light from the sixth seal will spiritually illuminate humanity in this period. And with it, mysteries will be clarified. We can already see that from this class as it has clarified the seven seals and letting us know what they are. Well, this Third Testament of the Bible goes on to clarify many mysteries, including reincarnation, life on other worlds, where we go after we die, and what heaven and hell really is. I could go on and on how we can control the weather and speak to nature, even how we can use telepathy to communicate with one another. This is the third testament of the Bible. From it, not only will we learn how to heal our brother, just like the Messiah did, but we will also learn how to move mountains, just like he said we would. In chapter 63, verse 79, we read, I am leaving a new book to humanity, a new testament, my word of the third era, the divine voice that has spoken to mankind upon the opening of the sixth seal. Again, it is in the sixth seal that we got this third testament of the Bible. This should make sense when you think we got the Old Testament at the beginning of the fourth seal with Moses and we got the New Testament with the Messiah at the fifth seal. We are getting the third testament at the sixth seal. And it started with a lady named Damiano Aviedo, who was a representation of the sixth seal. You can read about her in chapter two and her relationship to Ro Rogers, and you'll see that she was proof of the illumination of the light of the sixth seal in our era. But anyway, it says, very few indeed were able to truly feel the presence of the divine envoy. 
Once again, he was the voice who cried out in the wilderness. And again, he prepared the heart of man for the imminent coming of the Lord. This is talking about Ro Roges, who was an instrumental figure in the writing of the Third Testament of the Bible. The verse says, thus the sixth seal was opened, allowing its contents to be contemplated and poured like a torrent of justice and light upon mankind. Thus many promises and prophecies remained fulfilled. What this is talking about is how the third testament of the Bible is a product of the sixth seal. When the sixth seal was opened, the spiritual valley came closer to mankind and individuals like Ro Rogers and Aviado Damiano started getting divine inspirations that they wrote down with the instruction to create what we know today as the Third Testament of the Bible. Now, in chapter 5, in verse 50, we read, You may find in my manifestations the same teachings as in the second era, but in this era I have come with the light of the Holy Spirit to reveal to you the unfathomable. And in communication from spirit to spirit, I will continue revealing my new and very great lessons. Now, not only is this talking about the Third Testament of the Bible, but it is also referring to how many of the rest of us are receiving the same type inspirations from the Father. A lot of people who read the Third Testament for the first time will say things like, the Father has already revealed that information to me before I ever read it in a book. Well, this is the era in which we're living in. And that's what he's talking about right there when he said of my Holy Spirit to reveal to you the unfathomable and in communication from spirit to spirit. That spirit to spirit communication is what we know as intuition. But anyway, he says, I will continue revealing new and very great lessons. I shall give you to know all the content of the sixth seal in this stage of revelations so that you may go on preparing for the time when I shall open the seventh seal. Again, hinting that there could be some time left before we see the opening of the seventh seal. To finish out that lesson, it says, and so you will begin to know the unfathomable and so you will find that the spiritual valley is the dwelling of all the spirits, the infinite and marvelous mansions that awaits you in the beyond where you shall receive the reward for the works that you have sown with love and charity among your brothers. Well, this is why we praise the Father for this additional time so that we can get the rewards from sowing these seeds of love and charity. In other words, it is in this sixth seal that we can gain our merits that are necessary to go on to the higher mansions. We're going to have to gain merits in some way. We can do so by way of pain, but we can also do so by way of love and charity. The choice is ours. But anyway, there's one more verse that I want to pull out of the third testament of the Bible, and that's coming out of chapter 55. Chapter 55 is the chapter in the Bible that talks about the purification of the world and humanity in the judgment. It gives great detail about the events that we are to face during this time, like the wars, the famines. It was because of this chapter in 2018, my wife and I were able to predict this pandemic that we're in right now. It made it clear in the part of the book called Apocalyptic wars, pests, plagues, and destruction. It said in verse 45, still to come are the strange illnesses and epidemics that will appear among humanity and will confuse the scientists. But anyway, when we get down into about chapter 70 of the Third Testament, it is talking about a specific event that is to take place in the sixth seal. If we were to back up a little bit, we see the scripture talking about his elements and how they would be agitated during this time. In verse 68, it says, pray so that you will know how to conduct yourselves as good disciples 
because that will be the precise time in which the spiritual Trinitarian Marian doctrine shall be spread within the hearts. That is referring to the third temple that is to be built on the hearts and minds of humanity. Well, in verse 69, it says three quarters of the surface of the earth will disappear and one quarter only shall remain as a refuge for those that survive the chaos. You shall see the fulfillment of many prophecies. Now, it doesn't really tell us in what seal this will happen. Will it be in the sixth seal or the seventh seal? But when you look at verse 70, it says, do not be confused because before the closing of the sixth seal, great things shall happen. The heavenly bodies shall show great signs. The nations of the earth shall lament. And of this planet, three quarters shall disappear and one quarter only will remain in which the seed of the Holy Spirit shall grow as new life. This, I believe, is referring to that great earthquake that we hear about over in the book of Revelation and chapter six. We always heard that it was going to be a great earthquake. But what we never heard before is how three quarters of the planet shall disappear during this earthquake. So let's look a little bit closer at this six seal earthquake as described over in the Old Testament and the New Testament. When you come over and you look at the book of Revelation in verse 12 of chapter six, it says, and behold, when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood and the stars of the heaven fell unto the earth even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken by a mighty wind these are talking about the events that will happen before the opening of the seventh seal see how in verse 14 it says and the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places so the main events of the sixth seal, as we see between verses 12 and verses 14 of chapter six, is this great earthquake. The sun becoming black as sackcloth and the moon becoming as blood, as well as the stars falling unto the earth. The heavens departing as a scroll and the mountains and islands moved out of their places. Let's look close at what it's talking about here at this great earthquake, because you see how it's tied to the sun becoming black as sackcloth and the moon as blood. That is a very strong hint as to what event is actually talking about, because we see this mentioned throughout prophecy all over the Bible, especially like over in Joel and chapter two which seems to be an entire chapter devoted to this event. See how verse 10 says, the earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark and the stars shall withdraw their shining. That's talking about the same event that we hear about in Revelation chapter six. Verse 31 is talking about the same thing when it says the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. So this is actually what was being referred to to happen at the end of the sixth seal is the great and dreadful day of the Lord. That's why you see in verse 15, 16 and 17 of chapter six, how the kings and the great men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and of the rocks and said to the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. It is because of these events, this earthquake, the sun turning dark and the moon into the color of blood that lets these kings and these captains and everybody else on the world know that the great day of his wrath is come. We can see this event talked about all throughout the Bible. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 35, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 20, Isaiah chapter 24, verse 23 talks about it. 
as well as 13 verse 10. Verse after verse, scripture after scripture, talking about this event. But one of the main places that we hear about this is in Matthew chapter 24. You see in verse 29, how it's talking about immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. This is the same event, and we see that it happens before it shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And it says, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with great power and glory. So this is what we're talking about here when we're talking about these events of the sixth seal. Mark chapter 13 talks about it. Luke chapter 21 talks about this great day of the Lord. But one verse I want to point out to you is over here in 1 Thessalonians and chapter 5 when it's talking about the day of the Lord. Because in chapter 5 verse 3 it says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come up before them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. This, I believe, also is pointing to the timing of this day of the Lord and how it coincides with the whole peace and safety thing. If we exhausted the search about the day of the Lord, this video would probably never end. So let's close out by coming back over to the third testament of the Bible and looking at the last few verses that talks about the sixth seal. Chapter 38, verse 55 says, The book that was sealed in the heavens has been opened to the sixth chapter. It is the book of the seven seals, which contains wisdom and judgment, which was unleashed by my love for you to reveal to you the profound lessons. Talking about the time that we're in. And in chapter 48, which is about spiritual gifts and spiritualization, Verse 13 says, all of you possess the gifts of the spirit, which are beginning to develop in this third era due to the evolution reached by the spirits. Intuition, foresight, revelation, prophecy, and inspiration are manifesting in a clear way among humanity. And it is this that proclaims the new era. It is the light of the book of the seven seals opened in this era to the sixth chapter. Welcome to the sixth chapter. So now I'm sure somebody's asking the question now, is this all this about just a big earthquake and that's it? Well, let's come back over to chapter 55 of the third testament of the Bible and let's look at verse 29. It says, but the hour of the conscience approaches. It is the same as if you would say that the day of the Lord or his judgment is about to take place. This is making a connection between the day of the Lord and the new covenant that we hear about. That is, in fact, what the new covenant is all about, is that mankind will once again be under the rule of our conscience. Our conscience will be our guide. That's what Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 10 is talking about when he says, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Our hearts is the same thing as saying our conscience. And that's why the Third Testament is saying that this hour of the conscience is the same as if you would say that the day of the Lord or his judgment is about to take place. Then notice that it says, then shame shall rise in some and remorse in others. Well, that's what the Messiah was talking about over there in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 30 when he said, and then shall all of the tribes of the earth mourn. That's shame and remorse that we will feel when our conscience is awakened inside of us and stands as our judge. 
Now, this shame and remorse is also being talked about over in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2. But the thing about Daniel in chapter 12 is it goes into detail on the timing of all of these events. See how in verse 7 of chapter 12 is talking about the time, time and half a time. And then down in verse 11, it's talking about the 1,290 days. And in verse 12, it's talking about the 1,335 days. We've done many classes on this before, but what he's telling us about is this blessing that we will get from the day of the Lord or the awakening of the conscious. Now, like I said, I've done several classes on this, but let me briefly show you how Daniel's prophecies point to the year 2021. Well, first of all, you have to understand that a time is 490 years. We learned that over in Daniel chapter nine. So what he's talking about in chapter 12 is the reign of the Catholic Church that started when Constantine became the emperor in 306 AD. Well, when you add three and a half times plus 306 AD, you end up in the year 2021. And then when you're looking at the other prophecy in Daniel in chapter 12, understanding that the daily sacrifice was taken away in December of 606 BC, and you add the 1,290 plus the 1,335 years, you end up in December the 25th of the year 2020. But now we must understand we're talking about sacred years and not Gregorian years. So whereas the early date would have been December the 25th for that blessing that we hear about in Daniel in chapter 12, that year won't actually end until September of the year 2021. So in other words, both those prophecies in Daniel in chapter 12 were pointing to the year 2021. But now I'm not a prophet. I've never had a conversation with the Lord directly. And I don't claim to know the future. I'm just a dude who reads the Bible way too much for any normal person. But let me show you another verse coming from the third testament of the Bible that may narrow this down a little bit when we compare it to the book of Revelation. It's also in chapter 55 and it's verse 7 which says, when those chosen by me find themselves reunited round my law, the earth and the stars will be shaken and in the sky there will be signs because at that instant, the voice of the divine spirit surrounded by the spirit of the just and of the prophets and the martyrs will judge the spiritual and material realms. So, if you break this verse down and see who it is that he's talking about, you see, it says those chosen by me. So this will be referring to those individuals we read about over in Revelation and chapter seven, talking about the 144,000, as well as that multitude that no man can number. Then notice how it says, find themselves reunited round my law. Well, to understand what he's talking about there, I believe we could come over to the book of Revelation in chapter 12, where it's talking about that sign in the heavens that we saw on September of 2017. We learned in chapter 20 of the third testament of the Bible that that sign in the heavens that John beheld in his ecstasy, that woman dressed in the sun and a radiant virgin of light. Verse 54 says that woman, that virgin is Mary, whose womb will once again conceive, not a new redeemer, but a world of men who sustain themselves by her love, faith and humility in order to follow the divine footsteps of Christ, the master of all perfection. What is talking about is the birth of a new people, a people who will follow the footsteps of the Christ, meaning they will obey the law just like he did and taught his disciples. In verse 55, it says that prophet saw how the woman suffered as though to give birth. And the pain was that of the purification of man and the expiation of the spirits. 
So the birth pains were the representation of the purification of those new type of people. And it goes on to say, when the pain has passed, the light will be made in man and gladness shall fill the spirit of your universal mother. So here it's talking about the events that will transpire after that purification process is over with. Thing is, when we come back over to the book of Revelation and chapter 12, right after it talks about her being with child and travailing with birth and pain to be delivered, it goes on in verse five to say that she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. So if we understand that this child is a representation of us and those who will walk in the Messiah's footsteps, we understand that being called up to his throne means being reunited around his law. But then look at verse six. It says, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. So this is talking about the timing of what we read about over here in verse seven of chapter 55, where it says, and when those chosen by me find themselves reunited around my law, the earth and the stars will be shaken and in the sky there will be signs, which all seems to be following this same six seal event that we have been talking about. Well, if you come over and you look at the feast days, the mandatory feast day that fell around that great sign in the sky, you see Sukkot or the Feast of Tabernacles started on October the 4th and ended on October the 11th. Well, of course, that feast is all about reuniting with the Father and his law. In fact, it is the last day of that feast they call Shemini as Tourette, that is a celebration of the law or the day when they read the covenant throughout the entire community. So now when we come in and we add that 1,260 days that we saw over in the book of Revelation to the Shemini as Tourette of the year 2017, we end up on the Feast of Passover or what the Jewish community would consider Passover Eve of the year 2021. And so it appears as though that prophecy also points to the year 2021. In fact, that's why I ended up starting this class because I wanted to understand the sixth seal and see what it is that we can expect in the year 2021. But again, I say that I don't know the future and I could be wrong on all of this. And my purpose is not to scare you or to make you think that something is definitely going to happen in the year 2021. What I'm doing here is just giving you a heads up just in case something does happen in the year 2021 so that you can be prepared to take correct actions when you see these events transpire. Now, my intent is not to scare you. I understand there can be a lot of people here who are watching this video who haven't been reuniting themselves around the law. And for you, I bring this verse to your attention. This is also coming out of chapter 55 of the Third Testament of the Bible, and it is verse 21, which says, Nonetheless, at the hour of justice, I have never presented myself to ask if you have yet repented or if you have prepared yourselves or whether you remain still submerged in disobedience and evil. This is talking about the age of grace that we live in now and how it seems as though nobody is being held accountable for our disobedience to these laws that we are talking about. Sure, for those who have been keeping those laws, they understand the blessings that they get from doing so. But for those who haven't been keeping the laws, it's really only important that they do so when this hour of justice is announced or this dreadful day of the Lord when it presents themselves. It is then when they need to run towards the covenant and the scripture and not toward any protections that man will offer them at the time, because all of them will fail you during this hour of the conscious or this hour of justice. Verse 22 says, my justice has arrived at the appointed time 
and he who has known to build his ark on time has been saved. Now, of course, that's talking about those who have already started to keep the covenant, which you find in Exodus chapter 20 through 24, verse 7. But that verse goes on to say, while he who has responded with ridicule and did nothing for his salvation when the hour of justice was announced had to perish. So when you start to see these events transpire, if if you do nothing or if you respond with ridicule, then you will be of those who will perish and not survive this tribulation. So I only bring this to your attention so that you'll know what action to take during that great and dreadful day of the Lord. And that is to jump headlong into the scripture and start trying to understand the covenant. Exodus chapter 20 through chapter 24, verse seven. Some of you might actually do so ahead of time. Many of you have done so already. But for the rest of us that are lagging behind, in the meantime, we at least need to know where our Bibles are and where the covenant is, which I'll say for the last time in this video, Exodus chapter 20, chapter 21, chapter 22, chapter 23, and the first seven verses of chapter 24. Remember to subscribe to our channel, hit that like button if you haven't done so already, please leave a comment, and may our Lord bless you and keep you, May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.